Good morning, y'all. Good morning, Shaw. What's going on, y'all? Oh, yeah. They go to the ducks. This is how things gonna be in the morning for them now. But they made it through another night unscathed. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna speed them right quick. Take a look around and get out on this walk. They even had a good time in here overnight. Hey, good morning, y'all. Oh, yeah. Got a beautiful morning. Look like it's gonna rain today a little bit. I ain't checked the weather. Hey, it made me feel better. I remember when I used to check the weather every morning before I came out. Back when it was uh, snow and ice. I used to have my assistant tell y'all what the weather was every morning. Hey, I thought that was cool. And then, I don't know, I started having problems with Google. <laughs> Uh, they started saying different things and I'm like, that ain't what I was trying to get it today. But I guess they changed up their, their greeting. Or uh, it changed up for me. I don't know. But after a while, it wasn't the same no more. <laughs> That's how things seem to be. Well, I tell you, people be thinking that I'd be like so good with technology. They be like, ah, oh, you, and I just do a little bit of research, find out what I need to know how to do. I learn how to do that and I move on. Hey, I'm serious, yeah. I'll be, I, I feel so bad, I don't check email. I don't like checking text message. I, I just don't like, I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm trying to detach from the world or the world is, a, is connected in a way that I'm just not familiar with. I, I knew I had a problem with it when I was in the military. Cause they used to make me carry a phone. Like when you was on standby, or not even on standby. It's like once I got a cell phone, because basically, let's just go like this. At one point in time, you had a room phone. Hey, people would call you and leave a message, like a home phone, you know, a wall phone. Leave a message, you come home, you check the message, you get back to them the next day. People would be like, oh, thanks for getting back in touch with me. I really needed to talk to you. Nowadays, if you don't answer somebody's phone call or text message right when they send it, people be getting attitudes. Does anybody else notice that? It's like, I don't want to be sitting around. And it's like, wait, wait. You got to understand. These are text messages and, and it's a cell phone. People seem not to understand it, but oh my goodness, this is tight. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm saying... Oh, that was dope right there. I like that. I'm saying it's like people, I don't know. Maybe we're getting, I don't know. I think we're moving into a, like a popcorn society where everybody wants everything now. Fast food, you want it now. Like patience is not something that people have to understand these days. And I think that's what's going on. When people find out that 
they have to wait. Or I'm say I'm serious. Even for me, I get people wait. Your next appointment is when? Oh yeah, I go to work today, yeah. Yep, and they'll get mad. Well, I got something I got to do tomorrow. Is there any way you can squeeze me? I'm like, I'm just meeting you right now on the phone. What makes you think that I'm worried about what you got going on tomorrow? I don't know. I tell you, what kind of energy I got today, yeah? It feel like I'm coming for somebody. <laughs> oh yeah, that's exactly what I feel like. Like, but I know what's about to happen today. I go to work. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I look forward to it. But at the same time, I do. Sometimes I be feeling like I know I'm about to get some kind of energy today. And that's the thing. Knowing how to deal with other people's energy. Look, learning how to deal with your own energy is one thing. And I'm going to be honest with you. These days, I don't even look at my calendar no more to see who's coming. I don't. Because then I'd be, I'd be anticipating energy. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I know who it is today. I don't even look at my calendar. Well, maybe I'll look after my morning walk. Because I tell you, if I look before, ooh, yeah, I might catch that energy. And that's what's crazy. I know that happens for me. It's like, yep, I don't know what that means. And I don't know why energy be affecting me so much, but boy, it's like I know what kind of energy I'm gonna walk into with most people. I do. Well, unless they're new. And I think that's why I don't open up to a whole lot of new people because I'm saying, figure out new people's energy. And see, I'm in a one-man shop. Yeah, I don't understand. When you barber like I barber, or work like I work, whatever you wanna call it, what I'm saying is, People who've never been in a chair like mine, they don't know what they expect when they get there. Then they come in and they expect, oh, I didn't expect it to be like this. That's what I hear all the time. They don't even expect to be in a one man, like just me and them in, one, in a spot together by ourselves. So a lot of times they come in and if they're new, they're either moving to town or there's somebody that's been places and keep getting jacked up. So a lot of times what happens is people will get in my chair and think I'm not gonna listen to them or I'm not gonna do what they ask or they're real jumpy and have to feel like they have to look in the mirror the whole time while I'm working. They have to give me pointers on how to do it and they can't relax. And that makes it very hard for me because I'm sitting there like, look, I'm trying to give you my best but since you can't relax, it's making me hard to relax. I know I'm gonna meet they goal. What I'm saying is, I ain't saying I can't mess up. What I'm saying is, especially when you show me the pictures, but I'm gonna be honest, I'm telling you, what really be happening is when they show me pictures that they proud of. Ooh, that's the hard ones, y'all. And I wanna look just like this. It's like, it, I, I don't know. I'm saying, why didn't you stick with that barber if you wanted to look just like that? And I get it. Things happen. But what I'm saying is, hey, don't make me dumb down my work. <laughs> People be walking in like, I just love this look. And it's like, that look do not be working for you. Ooh, I just rolled my foot. Ooh. Ooh. And I feel bad to say stuff like that. But I'm just like, hey, I don't think you should do that. And that's when it gets bad because person who's like, who's traumatized, they don't want to trust you the first time around. Hey, that worked with the relationship talk too now, don't it, y'all? Oh yeah. But I think that's what I like about barbering is, it's almost like a new relationship every time. I'm saying, I love the feeling of overcoming those things because that's how you win new clients. Yes, I'm not saying I'm terrified or I'm scared. I'm saying that just gives me a different kind of energy because I feel like it feels like you're dealing with an abused dog. Like, not trying to be funny, but when somebody goes and gets their head chopped up everywhere they go, which other barbers make your, your bar, ooh, other barbers can make your life hard as a barber. 10 barbers who don't listen. 
make you have one client in your chair who feel like you ain't never listening. Hey, it take a long time. Hey, if one of my clients sit in the chair and it wasn't, an well, it might, I ain't saying it ain't never an instant connection because to me, after we get through that first haircut, that's when the instant connection happened. Oh, bro, my bad. Oh, you laid me out. But I'm telling you, even when they come back the second time, they still had that in them. I'm telling you, it's because we have a society that seems like it just don't care. I mean, money rule everything. That's what it seemed like. I mean, people who actually care, they care. It seemed like they even starting to care more about money than they care about what they doing. And it's like, you gotta treat the people who you doing it for with some kind of respect too. I'm saying, we ain't getting nothing but beat up on all sides right about now, y'all. And I don't think society is paying attention to that. I don't think they are. And when I say we getting beat up on all sides, I'm saying, it still feel like people want to have something to argue and fuss and fight about. Like, at some point, I think this is the first time in my lifetime that I feel like we as a country have met an enemy that there was no game, no game plan to defeat and we haven't defeated it. You know, like, like I feel like COVID was and, and I'm not, I don't know anything about this other than this, but this is what it reminds me of. It's like HIV to America. And the reason I say that is because when I was a kid and HIV came on the scene, that jump was like, like terrifying to everybody in the world. And people took real precaution and they took it very seriously. We even had Magic Johnson come on the, on the, on the scene. And what I'm saying is, hey, if anybody saw him, in that video with LL the other day. Hey, that brother still looking amazing all these years later. What I'm saying is, I don't even think I was 10 when I found out he had it. Nah, I had to be older than 10. I think I was in like the fourth grade. What what age is that, y'all? Uh, out of year, I, I failed the third grade, y'all. Hey, but anyway, so I'm saying he, oh, uh, we'll talk about that. Hey, but he is still kicking it. And he's doing great. He's doing better. What I'm saying is, the man don't look like he has any signs of getting worse. And now what I'm saying is, I feel like COVID came in and it like did the same things. So many people took it seriously. So many people didn't take it seriously. Then we had so many problems behind it. The isolation and putting people off to themselves and not letting people talk. People losing their businesses, their families, their households. It's so many different things going on. And I feel like everybody is looking for a place to turn for for some kind of normalcy still. I don't know. But I'm saying it feels like we're on the other side of it, but it feels like the country still hasn't healed at all. It feels like, like, I don't know. I don't know, like... I have no clue. And that's 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 a scary thought because I'm saying we should be getting in my opinion closer not I don't know. Look, I'm not the doctors to tell whether covid is what it should be doing, but what I'm saying is hey, when we had that 4th of July, I didn't have a lot of people over, but my neighbors were close. And I'm saying I didn't get in and like I was the one out lighting the fireworks and doing the video, so I was pretty far away from people. <laughs> hey, but I was worried about getting blown up out of the fireworks too though. Okay, anyway, what was I talking about? I'm saying it it does seem like I don't know, like the country pushed itself apart. And I don't know. I can't even explain because in some ways I feel way more comfortable. And I feel like I got comfortable because I felt like for the first time, everybody in the world was kind of acting how I felt. Like I felt unsafe everywhere before. And then I realized, I ain't gonna say I felt unsafe. That, that's not the truth. I never felt unsafe. I felt that I always had to be uh, aware of what was going on. And it seemed like a lot of that had calmed down. But I realized for me, what was my downfall? I think mostly 
was watching the news. Oh, they kept me spun up about something. Now, they never kept me spun up about something where I felt like I had to get mad about something with somebody. I don't understand how people choose sides. I guess that's a problem for me. It's like I've never been able to choose sides. <laughs> I guess that would make me indecisive, but I feel like I'm very decisive. I feel like I can always find a way around. Yeah, that was a shortcut. I'm saying I don't feel like I ever have to choose because it's always a way. It's always a way. And I'm saying just because somebody says there's no way, that don't make it so. I'm saying communication is key to everything. And then once we all can sit down in this world and start talking to each other and understand it, but too many people, they get set in their vision of what they feel it should be like. And then there's no room for anybody else to have a say so. And that's just called loud talking. And a lot of times when that happens, there's no communication being done whatsoever. And yeah, you might feel like you're right in the moment, but it don't never feel good. Never feel good to be right just because you said so. Especially when because you said so can be proven to be wrong. Oh, <laughs> hey, that's when it hurt, huh? That's when it's called you eating your words. So what I'm saying is, I don't know. That sounded like you're talking to a kid right there. But I'm saying it feels like so many people have just a value system in their head. And I'm saying it's crazy to me because the very people who feel like they don't, I'm saying somebody will sit here and be like, and even me, I'm saying I'm guilty of it too. I'm not perfect. I mean, I, I might claim, it. no, I'm just joking. I don't even claim to be, I ain't even gonna be funny about that this moment. Hey, what I'm saying is, I don't know. And since I don't know where I'm going with that, I ain't gonna continue with it. But I ain't got nothing else to talk about, y'all. So y'all might have to start talking to me again. <laughs> hey, uh, what did I do yesterday? I went back to Taekwondo yesterday. Hey, yeah, I did. I took it easy on my knee. No whole lot of bouncing, but what I'm saying is I participated in the whole class. Only thing I didn't do was the little fun event that they do at the beginning. And I didn't do the fun event that you do at the end. Now, I didn't go swimming on Monday because I had a lot going on. Oh, and I also went and did, uh, I ain't going to say no photography, but I'm, I'm starting to link up with some photographers, hopefully video and stuff like that. I had my second week of meeting with somebody to, to talk video. So at least I feel like I'm moving in the right direction. Uh, I got another guy uh, at the gym who I'm about to head there right now. He wants to get involved. He's talking about getting him a YouTube channel started. So what I'm saying is it's starting to catch on a little bit. It looks like... Even though I feel like I'm creating all of it, it looks like I might have some people to be shooting with here soon. And hopefully that's going to spark some kind of, uh, I don't know, like creative content. I'm saying when you work with other people, you start to come up with ideas. I guess what I'm saying is this is the very thing that I was talking about, about how COVID is separating everybody. I'm saying even my creativity is getting stifled when you can't be around other people. You can't bounce ideas as easy. It's not as easy. And I'm saying, I've been talking about this from the start to the finish. What I'm saying is, people talk on the phone and call me. And this is tying it all the way back to the beginning. Uh, what I'm saying is, people sit there and think that because you're not talking to them or not answering their call, whether it's barbershop, family related or whatever. I'm saying, that's because things might be happening in the moment, y'all. Y'all got to think. A lot of people do sit around and watch TV and do things all day long. What I'm saying is, there's people out there creating things. What I'm saying is, let me ask y'all a question. I ain't saying that I'm Elon Musk, but what I'm saying is, pick up the phone and call him and see how much he answers. What I'm saying is, when you're being creative and you're trying to, trying to produce, oh my goodness, you are right. And that don't mean what it is you're trying to produce. I'm not just talking about video content. I'm talking about people got work to do. And, I, and people always say, man, you're super busy. Look, I'm not super busy. I am, by my standard. But I feel like I just learned how to, how to not, I don't want to say control my time because I do not have time. I do not have control over my time. COVID has helped me learn to better understand how my time works. And I'm just trying to get the best out of it. And I'm going to be honest, my time does not work well talking on the phone. Heck, even with this camera, like what I noticed is 
just so I can make sure I get this done. I'm doing it while I'm getting my steps in. I was thinking I was thinking I was gonna set up a, a room and do the 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 video talking heads and all that stuff. And I'm like, how often am I sitting down and I gotta come up with a script and sit here and talk? What I'm saying is, you don't always have to make it as hard as we think it is. This might not be what everybody want to see, but what I'm saying is since day one, I've always said, I ain't doing it for everybody. Hey, people ask me my channel name now. They say, what's your channel? And I tell them, you know why? Because a lot of times they'll go look and they'll be like, oh, that ain't for me. And I'll be like, okay. And that's what I mean. I guess when you feel like, I don't know how to word this, like failure is not an option to me. So it don't even exist in my eyes. What I'm saying is the success is built the way that I believe a success is built. It's not structured off of the way that the world built it. Heck, I'm out here taking a walk. Everything looks like a success to me. I'm doing all the things that you should be able to do. I, excuse me for saying it that way. But what I'm saying is I woke up this morning. That's a blessing. I'm out here doing my walk this morning. That's a blessing. Hey, what I'm saying how you judge your values oh my goodness if you let somebody else set what your bar is you're gonna spend your whole life trying to live up to it because they ain't gonna never set it within your reach <laughs> they'll never set it within your reach hey i was looking at uh yeah check this out i must have been looking at my phone right yeah so i was looking at uh at uh, one of these world star videos. I'm starting to like this because they give me something to talk about. Yeah. I, I said, yeah. <laughs> hey, so I'm looking at uh, Rick Ross got these mugs, these, cl these cups. And he was like, yo, check these boys out. It was a slick cup. I ain't lying. I might be hating a little bit. But uh, he showed this cup off and it had a cigar holder in the side. And I'm thinking that's tight. But to me, that's like a one time use cup. When you give that cup away, you should let that person take it home with them. And hell, Rick, since it's yours, you should have just engraved it and said, Rick Ross on the side of it, or Rose or, or Wingstop or something. Give them away with the cigar in it once you find the sticks. What I'm saying is, why would you do that to a cup? Because you know how hard it's gonna be. And what I'm saying is, am I supposed to give everybody a cigar every time they come to my house? Now people gonna come to your house, cause that's, look, I ain't even famous. Soon as I show something, people be like, hey, let me check that out. They're like, what? No, do you go to Rick Ross? Hey, what I'm saying is, Rick, when I'm at your house, bruh, let me get a shot out of that with a cigar. What I'm saying is, back in the day, it used to be Cuban. Tell me what it is today. What cigar goes in that thing? Because I don't know. Hey, what I'm saying, why? Man, let me tell you what I had for, to drink last night. I had a red cup of wine. Yep, that was Merlot. Uh-huh, what I have it in? Yep, that was so low. There you go. That's how I drank it. Man, I don't even think I finished it. Hey, back in the day, boy, wine. I used to feel like I drank a bottle in a night every night. <laughs> it's only red wine. Only well, no. Nah. I had a moment where I was drinking that uh, what is it, Moscato? That sweet, sweet. Hey, no, nah, I can't say that. I was about to say I ain't never been in the heart. Nope, that ain't true either. Yeah, I spent the year in Korea. I think that year in Korea probably took like, I don't know. It hurt my body pretty bad though because I had just turned 21 in Korea. Hey, we gonna have to talk about that. Oh yeah, that's a story I wanna tell y'all. Yeah, I don't know if I wanna tell y'all today because it's the end. Yeah, 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 we gonna have to talk about that one. When I turned 21, oh look, I still don't know the laws of drinking. My cousin was just explaining to me, look, I've never been a real drinker, yeah. Like, it ain't been something that's been in the front of my mind to do. I do it every once in a while, but eh, eh, no excitement, just a lot of pain the next day. <laughs> hey, look at my rock. It ain't got no water on it at all. But it's a good thing it's going to rain. Oh, they're going another stack of rocks, and I missed that one the first time. I think I saw that one yesterday. Anyway. Hey, I appreciate y'all coming for another walk with me. Hey, you know something else I want to tell y'all? This daggone camera set up yesterday, the audio didn't sound bad to me at all. Let me know what y'all thought. If you made it this far. 
Hey. Uh, hey, it's been super hot out. Only thing I really been doing around the yard was working on the uh, duck cage. And I still got a little bit more I want to do to that. But it's been so hot. I'm, I ain't lying. Like, I go outside for a minute and I'm sweating everything out. So I ain't been doing too much of that. I wait until the sun goes down a little bit and then I go out. But by that time, it's a bad time to get a camera out. <laughs> hey, but I'm still getting a little bit of stuff done around the yard. Hey, the, the, the pond is starting to look a little better. I ain't put the backhoe back on. And I think I'm gonna have a problem with the backhoe because I let it sink all the way down to the ground on an unlevel surface. I normally don't, don't do that, but I knew I wasn't planning on putting the backhoe back on immediately. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get that, uh, the wheelbase thing for the backhoe. But, sound like we got people coming up. Well, yeah, I gotta get to the pool anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm running late. I gotta get to the pool, get my little swim in, get my stretch in, and I gotta get to work. Hey, I wanna thank y'all once again. Hey, these boots are doing good. My knee is doing good. My bad if I took y'all a little bit of a all over the place, but that's how your boy think. I'm just getting used to it. Hope y'all are too. Hey, if it's too much for you, hey, thanks for stopping through. I did this one for you. You're always welcome to come back. Even if you say it was whack. <laughs> I really don't care. Hey, and I just think, hey, I'm out of here, y'all. Let me get on my way. Y'all take it easy.